For our gospel reading, we heard Jesus say, by their fruits you will know them. And Jesus used that metaphor of fruit a number of times. The idea behind this is that people who are Christians will live lives that are different from the rest of the people. They will live by different standards and by different values. And it should be apparent just by looking at how someone lives whether or not they are a Christian because there should be a significant difference. Oftentimes there is not that. There is no difference in the way people live their lives from those who claim to be Christians and those who do not. Sometimes the only difference is that people who claim to be Christians go to church and do religious things but in the way they live their everyday lives, there is no difference in their life and the lives of non-Christians. But yet, the New Testament is clear that we are to live by a different set of standards. And this doesn't refer necessarily to what we might call moral issues. It does not mean that Christians are supposed to be good in two shoes. But what it does mean is the values and standards we live by should be different. And that should be evident in all areas of our lives. So today I thought it would be interesting to look at what are some of those things that should be different. We should refrain from judging other people. We should refrain from condemning and demonizing other people. Jesus said, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Now, this does not mean that we can't discern what other people are doing wrong, but that's as far as we go with it. We discern they're doing wrong, and that's it. We don't condemn them, and we don't judge them. We should forgive other people. We should not hold grudges. We should not try to get revenge. Jesus said, forgive and you will be forgiven. Jesus said, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus negated the Old Testament idea of eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Revenge and paying people back for things they have done is something we should not be involved in. And Jesus told us to forgive over and over. He said, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times returns to you and says, I repent, you shall forgive him. That does not mean we have to lay down in front of the door and let somebody be a doormat and walk all over us, though. We can protect ourselves by not putting us ourselves in the position of being a doormat. Forgiveness does not mean you have to let people walk all over you. But forgiveness does mean letting go. Let go of the desire for revenge. And forgiveness also means don't treat other people as they've treated you. But treat other people the way you would like them to treat you. The standard Jesus set is by their fruits you will know them. We are not as Christians not by what we say. And not whether we go to church. And not whether we participate in religious things. We are known as Christians not by what we claim to be. We are known as Christians by how we live our lives in the everyday world. Not by what we do here, but how we live our lives in the everyday world. Jesus told us to love those people we do not like Love those people we do not agree with. Love those people who don't like us. In the biblical sense, love is not a feeling. 
It's not an emotion. In the biblical sense, love refers to what you do, how you treat someone. Love in the biblical sense is an action, not a feeling, not an emotion. Do you act toward others lovingly? The Bible doesn't say feel love towards people. It tells us to act with love towards people. So we act with love towards people. No matter how they act with toward us. And no matter whether they hate us or not. Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. <coughs> Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And he goes on to say that God makes the sun shine on the good and the evil. And that God makes it rain on the just and the unjust. And Jesus said, if you only love the people who love you, what kind of reward are you going to get? Everybody does that. Everybody loves those people who love them back. The true test is how you love people who don't love them. That's the true test, you see. And that's what Jesus tells us to do. And you can see how diametrically that opposed that is to society today. But that is the way Jesus tells us to live. Jesus tells us not to hold ourselves up as being more righteous as other people. We need to realize that every one of us has our own fault. Everyone. There's not a one of us in here that's perfect, never been perfect. There's not a one of us in here that hasn't done things we're ashamed of, that hasn't done things that we hope nobody ever finds out. Not a one of us. All people have fun. Think of how popular it is in our society to draw a line. Us and them. The people who are on the right path are over here with us. These are all the people who agree with me. The people over here are all the people that don't agree with me. Us and them. And we're right proud of ourselves that we're in the us category, not the them category. I'm going to love all the people over here in the us category, but these people over here in the them category are going to hate. Is that not a description of our society today? You have all these different groups of people divided up into groups and they think they're the only ones that's right and they hate everybody else and don't agree with them. In that our society today, it sure is. Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Believing you are righteous is a very dangerous thing. Horrible things have been committed by people who believe they were righteous. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus quotes from the book of Isaiah, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, <coughs> teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. We have to be very careful about following religious rules that people have made up and say they are from God. But we have to be very, very careful about following religious rules that we are absolutely sure are from God. That's what the Jewish leaders did. The Jewish leaders were so sure, they were so sure, they were convinced that they understood all about God. And yet when God stood in their midst, they killed him. In connection with this, Jesus said, You outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. You see, people may have an outside veneer of religion, 
but on the inside that may hide something and disguise something. <coughs> I'm always suspicious of people who try to present a big religious veneer for everybody to see because I wonder what they're trying to hide. We should not look at other people as being less worthy than we are. Jesus said, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. The Gospel of Luke says, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Pride is condemned throughout the Bible. And it's not false pride that the Bible condemns. That's not even all. The Bible condemns pride. Period. Being puffed up with pride is condemned in the Bible. Because you know what pride entails? Pride always entails, by very definition, jacking yourself up just a notch above everybody else. And we should never think of ourselves that way. We should not see everything we have as ours. And I'm talking about more than money here. I'm talking about our time, our abilities, everything. We should see everything as something to be shared with others. Jesus said, everyone to whom much is given, from him will much be required. To him who much has been committed, from him will they pass the more. It's not talking about money. It's talking about everything. It could be talking about money. It could be talking about time. It could be talking about buildings, things you can do, anything. We should not live our lives pursuing money and the things money can buy. We should live our lives pursuing things that will last for all eternity. Jesus told this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, what shall I do? I have no room to store my crops. He said, I will pull down my barns and build bigger and store all my crops. And I will say to myself, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Whose will be the things which you have provided? I have seen over and over again people who spent their entire lives accumulating, thinking that one year they were, one time in the future they'd be able to live a good life. But maybe they did for a while. But it always seemed to. It always ended. They didn't live to be 175 years old spending their money. They died. Often it ended sooner than they ever thought. I get to see it last long enough for it to have been worth the good years of their life that they wasted, accumulated, for the few years they got to enjoy at the end. I've never seen that be worth a lifetime. I've also seen spend, I have also seen people spend a lifetime trying to buy things to make them happy. As the years went on, they kept buying more and more and more. They'd buy this, they'd buy that, they'd buy this, they'd buy that. They were always in a mad rush to find something else to buy. Thinking that if they could just buy the right thing, they'd finally be happy. But no matter what they bought, they were never happy. They fall and fall and fall and never find their happiness. Jesus said, so it is for he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Jesus said, do not lay up treasure for yourself on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. 
He will hate the one and love the other, or be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Can't do it. Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan, in which a man was going down the road and he got robbed and beaten up and left on the side of the road for dead. A priest goes by and does nothing, won't help the man. Another religious official goes by and does nothing, won't help the man. And here comes the Samaritan by. He picks the man up and bandages him, takes him to an inn, cares for him overnight, and he has to leave. And the next day tells the innkeeper, here's some money. If you spend more than this, take God, I'll pay you when I come back through the next time. And Jesus said, this is the way we should do. He said, go and do likewise. The good Samaritan did not know the man he helped. He didn't know if he liked this man or not. He didn't know if the man agreed with him on certain political and social issues. He didn't know if the man was an upright, righteous citizen who deserved his help. He didn't know anything. All he knew was the man needed help. And he helped him. Jesus wants us to help those in need. We are not to engage in deceit. We are not to engage in lying, in underhanded dealings. We're not even to engage in trying to arrange things to present a certain appearance. In the Bible, lies, deceit, scheming, underhanded dealings, are condemned and they are seen as the work of the devil. We need to realize that there is no exception in the Bible that tells us we may use evil means to try to achieve good purposes. That is never, that is never condoned in the Bible. Deceit, lying, scheming, craftiness, slyness, Slimes and all that stuff is universally associated with the devil and we cannot use those for good purposes. And finally I want us to consider one thing that's probably the most ominous of all. Let's not be too sure that we understand God. Let's not be too sure that we possess 100% truth. We go back to the Jewish leaders. Remember, that's what they thought. They thought they were the only people in the world who understood God. In fact, they went further than that. They thought they were the only people in the world whom God cared about. They thought God looked at non-Jews as trash. They thought they were the only people in the world God cared about. And they thought they were the only people in the world that understood God. And yet when God stood and stood among them, they did not recognize him and they killed him. That's how much they really did understand God. So I can't emphasize enough how careful we must be in thinking that we already understand everything. We need to be humble about our belief. We should not be too sure that we understand everything 100%. Now that doesn't mean we can't believe we are correct. That's not what I'm saying. But I will always leave a little room open because you know all of our understandings are partial. Remember, all we have is our human mind up here and it's tiny compared to the universe. So let's not fool ourselves into thinking that we understand everything because we do not. Let's be humble about our belief. So I want to go back over the main points we said today. Don't judge others. We can discern other people are doing wrong, but that's as far as we go. We don't condemn them. We don't demonize people who don't agree with us or who don't, we don't like. We must forgive others. We should never try to get revenge. We should act 
lovingly toward all people, no matter how they act toward us. We should not hold ourselves up to be righteous. Remember, we all have faults. There's no such thing as us versus them. Being religious is not the same thing as being a Christian. No one is less worthy and no one is more worthy. Others are not less worthy than we are and others are not more worthy than we are either. We are to share with other people not just money but our time, our ability. We're not to live pursuing money. You will never buy enough stuff to make you happy. We are to help those in need. We are to avoid lying, deceit, scheming, underhanded deal. And finally, let's not be too sure we understand it. Let's always leave just a little room open and realize that all of our understandings are limited. Could we allow ourselves to think about what the world would be like if everyone lived according to the things we talked about today? Things would be very different in the world. There's a lot of people that look at the teaching of Jesus and say you can't live by that because they're unrealistic. The people who say that, I say, wouldn't you like the way things are now? Look out in the world and see how things are now. If the way things are now has led to the way, if doing things the way we do them has led to the way things are now, If we don't like the way things are, then we've got to do things differently to get to some other place. So why are we absolutely so sure living by the ways Jesus taught can't work? Maybe they wouldn't. Maybe the world would be a better place if people would live just by the things we've talked about today.